Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Asif Qureshi and you are watching Dr. Asif Lectures. In the previous video, we discussed in detail about glycolysis and we learned that in the glycolysis process, glucose is converted into pyruvate. You know, pyruvate is a three carbon compound and as a result of glycolysis, two molecules of pyruvate were produced. You remember that? And I have given the link of my glycolysis video in the description box. So do watch that video as well. Now today we will discuss about what happens after pyruvate is produced, which is what we call the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle is also called citric acid cycle. It is also called tricarboxylic acid cycle, whatever you want to call it. But in this lecture today, I'll be using the terminology Krebs cycle. So pyruvate which is produced as a result of glycolysis is converted into acetyl-CoA. Now notice here that pyruvate is a three carbon compound written in the parenthesis and acetyl-CoA is a two carbon compound. Now whenever in metabolism you notice a change of carbon from a higher number to a lower number that simply means that one carbon has been removed. And when we say one carbon has been removed it usually comes out in the form of carbon dioxide. Okay, so when pyruvate is converted into acetyl-CoA, a carbon dioxide molecule is released. And this reaction is catalyzed by an enzyme which is known as pyruvate dehydrogenase. PDH is pyruvate dehydrogenase. Now remember, whenever there is an enzyme dehydrogenase in the metabolic pathway, you have to remember this. That dehydrogenase is actually plucking out high energy electron and putting it on either NAD or FAD, okay? So NAD and FAD are basically carrier molecules and if I'm dehydrogenase, I will pluck out electrons and put those electrons on the carriers. And the carriers are in this particular case, for example, NAD, which is converted into NADH. A high energy electron has been plucked out and been uh, transferred to a carrier molecule which is NAD in this case and it is now converted into NADH. Now pyruvate dehydrogenase requires a lot of cofactor molecules and this is important for your board's exam to remember that what are the different uh, cofactor molecules which are involved in functioning of pyruvate dehydrogenase and these molecules are these are thymine pyrophosphate which is a derivative of uh, vitamin thymine Lipoic acid, coenzyme A, FAD and NAD. Now here is an important clinical correlate which you must understand. Remember, in alcoholics, there is thymine deficiency. So alcoholics have thymine deficiency. Therefore, in alcoholics, remember that this pathway will be disturbed. And this is a very common scenario which is given in exams as well. That say for example, in emergency room, if you get somebody who is alcoholic and you start giving glucose infusion and this is not going to do any good with the patient. The patient may even die because of glucose infusion. Now you may ask that well glucose is something we routinely give to the patients who are hypovolemic or um, if, if you suspect there is hypoglycemia but in alcoholics you have to be careful. You know why? This is the reason. So if you give glucose to alcoholics, glucose will be converted into pyruvate and then pyruvate will not be converted into acetyl-CoA because thymine is not there. So one of the cofactor is absent. So pyruvate will accumulate and this pyruvate will be shifted towards formation of lactic acid. Therefore, alcoholics, if given glucose, may develop lactic acidosis. In order to avoid this situation, what you basically do is you give glucose but prior to glucose, you give them injections of thymine. So that's a very, very important clinical correlate for you. So what we are talking about is that pyruvate, which is a product of glycolysis, is converted into acetyl-CoA by the enzyme which is called pyruvate dehydrogenase and it requires a lot of cofactors listed here, okay? Pyruvate dehydrogenase is also very well regulated. For example, its own product, acetyl-CoA, it negatively uh, controls this enzyme, meaning that if more acetyl-CoA is produced, it allosterically inhibit the enzyme that now stop, I'm already produced in a very, very large quantity. You don't need to make more of me, okay? So this inhibits pyruvate dehydrogenase, right? And the next step is acetyl-CoA in combination with, now notice acetyl-CoA is a two carbon compound. 
It combines with oxaloacetate, which is a four carbon compound, and they combinedly produce citrate, which is obviously a six carbon compound. Two carbons from uh, acetyl-CoA and four carbons from oxaloacetate, a reaction which is catalyzed by the enzyme citrase synthase, okay? Now, citrase synthase is also very well regulated. It is negatively controlled by citrate, ATP, succinyl-CoA, and NADH. Now, think it this way. If there is a lot of energy available within the cell, your cell would not like this crap cycle to continue because there is already a lot of ATP available. So a lot of ATP will inhibit the enzyme. A lot of citrate is also indicative of the fact that there is a lot of energy already available. So cycle will try to stop itself. A lot of succinyl-CoA and then a byproduct of the Krebs cycle. If this is present in plenty, it will stop the cycle. Also NADH, if a lot of NADH is available, it means a lot of high energy electrons are available, which means a lot of ATP is available. So all high energy stuff will inhibit this cycle at the level of citrate synthase, okay? And what will positively control it? What will, what will upregulate? What will activate the functioning of citrate synthase? Anything which is indicative of low energy. And what is that anything? ADP. So if there is a lot of ADP inside the cell, that shows that the cell does not have a lot of ATP. ADP wants more ATP and therefore the cycle will be activated, okay? So that's something very simple to understand. Now what happens next? This citrate is converted into another molecule which is called isocitrate. This is still a six carbon compound by an enzyme which is called a carnitase, okay? Now this six carbon compound is next converted into alpha ketoglutarate, which is a five carbon compound. Again, a six carbon compound is now converted into a five carbon compound simply means that one carbon is lost. And where did that carbon go? Released as carbon dioxide. And what is the name of the enzyme catalyzing this reaction? The name of the enzyme is isocitrate dehydrogenase. And I told you, whenever there is a dehydrogenase, you always have to assume and you always have to, you know, it should be ringing bells in your head by listening the word dehydrogenase that an electron has been plugged out of carbon. And this is what happens here as well. NAD is converted into NADH. A high energy electron has been transferred to NAD, okay? And this isocitrate dehydrogenase is also negatively controlled by ATP as for the previous step. There is a lot of ATP, enzymes will be shutting down. And if there is a lot of ADP, enzymes will be activated. Also calcium is an activator, particularly in the muscle cells because when more calcium is influxed, Calcium would like your muscle cells to contract and in order to contract, you will need a lot of energy, a lot of ATP. Therefore, calcium will positively regulate energy production, which means these enzymes, okay? Now we have got alpha ketoglutarate. After alpha ketoglutarate, we get succinyl-CoA, which is a four carbon compound. Now from five carbon compound, we are getting a four carbon compound, which again, you should now understand, a carbon dioxide molecule will be released. And the name of the enzyme is alpha ketoglutrate dehydrogenase. Again, a dehydrogenase is there, which means another NAD will be converted into NADH. Now, simple concept, easy to understand. And this is positively regulated by calcium, negatively regulated by its own product, which is succinyl-CoA and NADH. So, so far, what's happening? In the glycolysis, you converted glucose into pyruvate, two molecules of pyruvate. From the pyruvate, you got acetyl-CoA and from there on, everything is happening inside the mitochondria. Acetyl-CoA is converted to citrate by combining with oxaloacetate. Citrate is converted into isocitrate, then to alpha-ketoglutrate and then to succinyl-CoA. Now, this succinyl-CoA uh, step is very important as far as a clinical correlate is concerned because there are mutations reported in alpha-ketoglutrate dehydrogenase which have been linked with a lot of tumors, particularly brain tumors, because alpha ketoglutrate has been uh, reported to be controlling methylation steps of gene regulation in a lot of cells. So if there is mutation in the alpha ketoglutrate dehydrogenase enzyme, there will be accumulation of alpha ketoglutrate and it will be converted to some other thing rather than succinyl-CoA. And that some other thing will disturb the whole gene expression profiling and that may lead to tumor formation, okay? Now this succinyl-CoA is converted into succinate, which is also a four carbon compound. So no carbon dioxide will be released. 
okay and the enzyme here catalyzing the reaction is called succinyl CoA synthetase now here one very important thing happens this is third of the three substrate level phosphorylations I told you in glycolysis that substrate level phosphorylation they happen at three places two of them in glycolysis and third here this is different guys from oxidative phosphorylation I will tell you in a minute what is oxidative phosphorylation but here a phosphate group is added to the ADP molecule to produce a TP molecule okay let's see how does that happen uh, there is a phosphate added and GDP GDP is converted into GTP but then suddenly adenosine diphosphate jumps in and it steals the phosphate converts it into ATP and the GTP molecule is back converted into GTP so here you generate some ATP and this is called substrate level phosphorylation let's see what happens next this succinate is then converted into fumarate and look at the name of the enzyme here again succinate dehydrogenase whenever there is a dehydrogenase there will be electrons plucking out and transported to a transporter or a medial carrier here the carrier is FAD which is converted into FADH2 okay fumarate is then converted into malate and malate is converted into oxaloacetate by these enzymes now that basically that basically is the story of the Krebs cycle in Krebs cycle you are producing a lot of substances which are of very high importance now listen to this guys Krebs cycle is the is the heaviest source of energy production in your body it produces the, the highest amount of ADPs routinely in a normal circumstance this is the key for production of ATP therefore if there is any problem within the enzymatic machinery like glycolysis you die you don't get sick therefore pathology of citric acid cycles are also very very uncommon and very rare but you usually die if there is anything wrong for example one of the enzyme econities econities is disturbed by rat poison so if some human being for example takes a lot of quantities of rat poison they will die because of the disturbance in the functions of economies so anything anything going wrong within crap cycle you don't produce ATP and that means death so this cycle is an extremely important cycle because you are living and you are performing whatever activities you are doing because of that cycle okay so let's do it one more time glucose into pyruvate is glycolysis that happens in cytoplasm that pyruvate is then converted into acetyl CoA now we are talking about mitochondria acetyl CoA is converted into citrate to isocitrate to alpha ketoglutrate to succinyl CoA to succinate to fumarate to malate in order to do all this what is the what is the output what is the summary you may want to forget some of the steps but you must master the next upcoming bits that I'm going to discuss okay times two everything in here has to be multiplied by two so if I ask you on this step for example when uh, isocitrate is being converted into alpha ketoglutrate how many molecules of NADH will be produced two because you remember two molecules of pyruvate were being generated so two molecules of acetyl CoA so two molecules of citrate so two molecules of isocitrate so two molecules of NADH everything here has to be multiplied by two remember this now let me ask you some questions how many carbon dioxide molecules do you think are being released in the Krebs cycle how many carbon dioxide molecules so if you see these yellow ones don't count this one because that's the glycolysis that's up stream we are talking about downstream stuff four molecules of carbon dioxide where are the four molecules these two molecules but they have to be multiplied by two remember that okay if I ask you how many NADH molecules are being produced NADH NADH first NADH is being produced when isocitrate is being converted into alpha ketoglutrate how many NADH produced there two the next one is well alpha ketoglutrate is being converted into succinyl CoA two molecules there and the last one is when malate is being converted into oxaloacetate two molecules there so a total of six molecules okay so remember uh, whatever you are seeing here has to be multiplied by two now comes a very high yield image now this is the crux 
of citric acid cycle. This is the summary of TCA. So what's happening in TCA cycle? If you look back here, all these steps, what's basically happening? What is entering into the cycle is acetyl-CoA. How many carbon molecules in acetyl-CoA? Two carbon molecules. And those carbon molecules throughout the cycle, when it passes through the cycle, those carbon molecules are being released at the end as carbon dioxide. Two molecules of carbon dioxide. Okay? And in this process, obviously it passes through a lot of steps. It passes through a lot of enzyme activities. But ultimately, this is what is happening. Acetyl-CoA being converted into carbon dioxide and a lot of things are being produced. And what are those a lot of things? Let's see. This is what is being produced. You produce NADH. How many molecules? Six molecules. If you don't understand, watch the video. Go back again. Watch it again. Watch it again. Watch it again. Unless you master this. Unless you understand this. Okay? So NADH is being produced. Six molecules. FADH, how many molecules? Two molecules. And ATPs, two molecules. And carbon dioxide, four molecules. So what I want you to do is go back um, a few seconds earlier, uh, stop the video, and try to figure out where is the ATP being produced. What is the step where NADH are being produced? What is the step where FADH molecules are produced? But this is what is being produced. So the whole summary of the Krebs cycle is acetyl-CoA, is converted into carbon dioxide and it produces a lot of molecules and these are the molecules okay what happens with the ATP you use the ATP what happens with the carbon dioxide ultimately you exhale it out what happens with NADH and FADH2 now here is something important for you to understand when when we again and again say the high energy electron has been plugged out see this is what happens that high energy electron sits down on the hydrogen. This hydrogen, which is colored here, this hydrogen, electron sits down on the hydrogen like this. So this is the normal hy uh, hydrogen structure where there is a positive proton inside and then an electron in the orbit. But when a high energy electron sits down on hydrogen, it is called a hydride and this is how it looks like. So this is a hydride molecule which contains a proton in the center. One electron is normal, but it contains an additional electron. So basically, the NADH molecule and FADH molecule, the hydrogen in these molecules are basically called hydrides. And they contain high energy electron which have been plugged out by the activity of which enzyme? Dehydrogenase enzymes. Okay. Now, these two molecules are therefore called high energy molecules. They are called high energy molecules. And what happens to the electrons of these high energy molecules? This is what happens. The electrons enter in the electron transport chain. So in the electron transport chain, when the electron enters, they are high energy electrons. But at the end of the electron transport chain, they are low energy electrons. And these low energy electrons combined with oxygen produce water. What happens to the energy? energy has been captured as ATP. This is called oxidative phosphorylation. So in oxidative phosphorylation, and I will make a different video for oxidative phosphorylation, all the steps, but here is the summary. In oxidative phosphorylation, high energy electrons enter the electron transport chain, leave the electron transport chain and produce water, and the energy of the electron is captured as ATP. Who were the carriers of high energy electron? The carriers were NADH and FADH2. This is all you need to know and understand about tricarboxylic acid cycle, citric acid cycle, or Krebs cycle. So there was a lot of information available for you to remember. Watch the video again and again. Like the video, share the video, subscribe the channel if you have not already done so. And I will be back very soon with another lecture on metabolism. Thank you very much.